Hi guys, this is Rahul from Simply Learn and welcome to this video where we'll be telling you how you can install Java on your Windows 10 operating system. After we're done with this installation, we'll also show you how you can run a very simple program. So now let's get started. So now let's download Java. Let's go to Google and search for Java download. We'll go to the link we see here, oracle.com. So now here we have the web page. Here we can see Java SE 13. So this is version 13. But this isn't the one we are going to download. We are going to download the 8th version, version 8, which is here. Now we are doing this because 8 is one of the more commonly used versions of Java. So let's click this and here we will go down. We need to accept the license agreement before we can download it. Now we have two versions here x86 and x64. Now you can download it depending on what version your operating system is. Now if you do have a Windows 10 operating system, it's highly likely you have a 64-bit version of Windows. Now if you do have a 32-bit version of Windows, you can take the x86. So let's download this. So we've actually already logged in, so we just need to run the installer file now. Let's go to downloads and run the file. So here we have the installer, we we'll go to the next step. We'll select this to next. Here we can see where the file is being installed to. We'll go to next. Now if you want to change where you want to install Java, we can press the change option. I'm just going to keep it here. We'll press next and let's commence with the installation. And there we go. The installation is now complete. So we don't need any tutorials or API documentation. So we'll just finish off and go to close. Now to see if Java is installed in your system, we can go to command prompt and type the term Java C, which refers to the Java compiler. Now as you can see here, this shows a number of different options you can choose from. This also indicates that Java has been successfully installed in your system. Now if the installation was not successful, you'll see something like Java C is not recognized as an internal or external command, operable program or batch file. But since we've done it successfully, this is what will be shown. Now, and now we're going to set an environment variable. Now what exactly is an environment variable? Now assume you have a file which has a .java extension. This environment variable tells the computer that the Java program needs to be called to run this particular file. So to set the environment variable, we'll need to go to control panel. Here go into system and security. Go to system and select advanced system settings. And then this shows up. Now before we go into environment variables, we'll need to go to where the Java file was installed. So let's go to this PC, C drive, program files, and here let's go to Java. So let's go to JDK, which is the Java development kit. Let's go to bin here and copy this path. We'll go back to environment variables, select path here, and then press on new, paste this, and OK. Now we'll go back and go to JRE, to the path of JRE, which is Java Runtime Environment. We click on this, in again, and copy this path. Select this one, new, and paste that. And there we go, the environment variables are now set. Now let's talk about running that simple program I told you about. Now this is possible with the help of an IDE. An IDE or Integrated Development Environment will give us a platform to code Java. We will be using Eclipse and IntelliJ as they are popular and commonly used. That being said, there are several other IDEs that are available in the market. So now let's work with Eclipse. Let's go to Google and search for Eclipse. We'll go to this link, press download. And then this shows up. Let's click on download. Now we've already downloaded the software, so I'm just going to directly go into the install phase. So downloads and select Eclipse. With this, you can see that there are multiple options for you to choose from. So we're going to select Eclipse IDE for Java developers. Now you have other options like for C and C++, JavaScript, PHP and so on. But let's go to the first one. And here you have the details. You can change them if you want. But I'm just going to go ahead with installation now. Press accept now. Here we remember accepted licenses and press accept. 
and then here as well we'll remember accepted certificates select this one and accept selected and there you go the installation is now complete let's click on launch now so here we are setting up a directory as a workspace uh, I'm not changing it here so I'm just going to go with launch here we have the Eclipse workspace now let's close this first and here we have the package explorer now in case this doesn't show up you can go to window show view and select on package explorer so now let's go to file new and java project we need to set up a project name i'm going to call it my project one go to next we'll go to source so this is where the source code for your program is going to be stored then let's finish and now we'll click on my project one go to source i click new and create a class We'll clean, I'll name the class my class and create it. And here we have it. So now let's write a simple program to multiply two numbers. So now let's write the main function. Open the bracket. Now we're going to initialize the first number. Now the second one. And finally the output. And finally the variable that will store the output. Now we'll just give them a simple print statement. Now let's run the code by clicking this option here using my class.java and there we have it here the product is shown to be 100 indicating that the program is running successfully. Now we're done with Eclipse. Now let's move on to the other IDE I was talking about which is IntelliJ. So for that again we'll have to go back to Google so that we can download it. Search for IntelliJ download. Go to this link here. So here you can see that we have two options the ultimate edition and the community version. Now here the ultimate version has way more options as you can see here but it's a paid version and only has a free trial. Now the community version is free so that's what we're going to take so we'll click on download here. So I've already downloaded the software so I don't need to do it again. So I'm going to go to downloads and so here we go let's just click on next. Select the location where you want to install it. Press next. Now we will add a 64-bit launcher shortcut on the desktop and create associations. So basically this means that these are the different file extensions that this will support. So .java, .groovy and now let's go to the next step. We'll install now and we'll wait. And there we go. The installation is now complete. Let's not import any settings. We'll accept the privacy policy. We'll set defaults. Now let's create a new project. So here make sure your project SDK is set to the version of Java you've installed. Make sure this isn't blank. We'll go to next. Here you need to select this option which is the create project from template and we are now going to create a command line application. Press next. Name the project which I'm going to call my project 2. You can change the location if you want. I'm just going to keep it the way it is and then click on finish. So now we're going to create a simple program through which based on the user's input we can determine whether a number is even or odd. So first we're going to import the package scanner through which we can take the user's input. Next let's go inside here. Let's create the available reader. Now let's ask for the user's input. Enter a number. We're taking in the value now in the variable num. 
reader dot next int so this is with which we'll be taking in the value from the user so we're going to set up a condition to determine whether the number is even or not so if the number when, when divided by 2 provides the remainder 0 it indicates that it's an even number we'll show them then Now for the else case, the number is not even. Or in this case, odd. And there we go. We're done. So let's run this program. So let's enter 12, the number is even. And there we go, we have a successful output. This indicates that the program is running successfully. And with that, we've also reached the end of this video. I hope you guys found this informative and helpful. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.